What if every law of physics you know, every galaxy, every atom, even the notion of cosmic beginnings, was shaped by a colossal secret? That we are living inside a giant black hole? The latest James Webb Space Telescope data shows 66% of distant spiral galaxies spinning clockwise, a pattern some theorists argue could only arise if our universe inherited its spin from a parent black hole. The geometry matches too. The boundary of our observable universe is the precise size predicted for an event horizon, given our universe's mass. If this new theory is right, everything from the Big Bang to the direction galaxies spin could be the echo of a much larger gravitational engine. But how could we possibly tell? A black hole isn't just a hungry monster in deep space. It's a region where gravity is so intense, nothing, not even light, can escape. There's a boundary called the event horizon. Cross that line and you're gone for good. But here's the twist. On the inside, space and time get scrambled. The equations of general relativity, the ones Einstein wrote down over a hundred years ago, say that all known paths through space-time curve inward. At the very center, you find the singularity, a point where density and gravity become infinite, and the laws of physics as we know them break down completely. Now, flip the script. Instead of thinking about what happens when something falls into a black hole, imagine what it would feel like to exist on the inside and looking out. The event horizon isn't just a wall, it's a one-way mirror. From inside, you can see everything within your cosmic bubble, but nothing beyond. That's your universe, sealed off by a boundary you can't cross. This is where things get really strange. The boundary of our visible universe, the furthest distance light could have traveled to reach us since the Big Bang, acts a lot like an event horizon. It's the edge of the knowable. Beyond it, information is forever out of reach. The math that describes a black hole's event horizon you can plug in the mass of the universe and you get a boundary that's eerily close to the cosmic horizon astronomers measure today. It's not a perfect match, but it's close enough to make physicists raise their eyebrows. So, what would it mean if the universe itself is the inside of a black hole? The singularity at the center, the place where everything breaks down, could be reimagined as the Big Bang, the moment when space, time, and energy burst outward from an unfathomably dense state. The event horizon becomes the limit of what we can ever observe. Everything we see, from the oldest galaxies to the cosmic microwave background, is trapped within this cosmic bubble. Outside? That's not just empty space. It's a region we can never touch, never see, never know. Physicists have long debated whether these similarities are just mathematical coincidences or hints at something deeper. Some propose that the universe's beginning wasn't a singularity at all, but a kind of rebound, a white hole, the time-reverse twin of a black hole, blasting matter outward instead of sucking it in. Others point out that if the universe did inherit its spin from a parent black hole, we might expect to see traces of that rotation imprinted on the largest structures we can observe. The stakes couldn't be higher. If the universe is the inside of a black hole, then everything we know about beginnings and boundaries has to be rewritten. The event horizon isn't just a feature of collapsed stars, it's the ultimate boundary of reality itself, and the singularity at the core. It might be the birthplace of everything we see and everything we are. General relativity, Einstein's theory from 1915, gives us the rules for how gravity shapes space and time. It's the physics that lets black holes exist in the first place. The equations are unforgiving. If you pack enough mass into a small enough region, gravity wins. Space curves in on itself, and you get a black hole. No escape, not even for light. But there's more than one kind of black hole in the math. The simplest, called Schwarzschild, has no spin and a single point singularity at its center. The more realistic kind, though, the kind that actually forms in nature, is the Kerr black hole. It spins. Instead of a point, its singularity is a ring, and the space around it twists and drags, pulling everything along for the ride. Now, here's where things get wild. In general relativity, there's a symmetry between collapse and expansion. If you flip the direction of time in the equations, a black hole becomes a white hole, not a region that swallows everything, but one that explodes matter out, impossible to enter from the outside. This is more than just a mathematical curiosity. Some physicists, like Nikodem Poplowski, 
have argued that the Big Bang could be the inside of a white hole, a kind of rebound from a collapsing parent universe. In a rotating black hole, this rebound could happen through the ring singularity, launching a new expanding region of space-time. That's one way to picture our universe's beginning. But what about the boundaries? In a black hole, the event horizon is the point of no return. In cosmology, there's also a limit, the cosmic horizon, the farthest distance from which light could have reached us since the universe began. If you run the numbers, the equations for a black hole's event horizon and the universe's cosmic horizon look strikingly similar. Plug in the universe's estimated mass, about 10 to the 46th times the mass of the Sun, and you get a radius in the ballpark of 14 billion light years. That's not a perfect match to the observable universe's size today, but it's close enough to make people wonder if there's more than coincidence at work. The Kerr black hole adds another twist. Because it spins, it can, in theory, pass on some of its angular momentum. If our universe came from such a parent, you'd expect to see traces of that rotation left behind, maybe even on the larger scales, like the spins of galaxy clusters. The math is tricky, but the basic idea is that the properties of the parent black hole, its mass, its spin, set the initial conditions for everything inside. That's the technical backbone for the hypothesis. General relativity doesn't just allow this scenario, it predicts the possibility. So, the foundation is there. General relativity's equations connect the dots between black holes and expanding universes. The Kerr solution, with its spinning ring singularity, opens the door to a universe that could inherit its structure and maybe even its spin from a black hole ancestor. And the numbers, while not a perfect match, are close enough to keep the question alive. That's the physics toolbox for what comes next. Astronomers using the James Webb Space Telescope set out to answer a simple question. Do galaxies in the early universe spin randomly, or is there a hidden pattern? The Jade survey gave them a fresh window into deep space, capturing high-resolution images of 263 spiral galaxies, some of the farthest and oldest ever seen. To figure out which way these galaxies were turning, researchers turned to an algorithm called Ganalyzer. This software doesn't care about colors or brightness. It just traces the winding arms of each spiral, assigning a direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, based on their shape. For the most ambiguous cases, the team relied on the clearest, most face-on spirals, where the direction was unmistakable. The results came as a shock. Out of those 263 galaxies, about two-thirds, roughly 66%, appeared to rotate clockwise from our vantage point on Earth. Only one-third spun the other way. If the universe is truly isotropic, as standard cosmology predicts, there shouldn't be any large-scale preference. Galaxy spins should be like coin flips, half one way, half the other. Instead, the JWST data showed a clear imbalance. That kind of asymmetry is not just unexpected, it's the sort of thing that keeps theorists up at night. Leo Shamir, the computer scientist behind the analysis, has spent years looking for spin patterns in galaxy surveys. His earlier work with SDSS and Pan Stars also hinted at possible handedness, but those claims sparked heated debate. Critics pointed to potential pitfalls, selection bias, classifier quirks, even the way telescopes are oriented. This time, with JWST's sharper images and a new field of view, the anomaly reappeared. The team double-checked the results by mirroring images, flipping axes, and running the pipeline with randomized labels. The excess of clockwise spirals stubbornly persisted. The implications are hard to ignore. If this pattern holds up, it could mean that something in the early universe, maybe even a cosmic-scale rotation, left its mark on the way galaxies formed. Some have speculated that a parent black hole spin, if our universe was born from such an object, might have seeded this large-scale alignment. But extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. The jade sample, while groundbreaking, is still small. Just 263 galaxies, all from a single survey field, is not enough to rewrite the laws of cosmology. Instrument quirks, sample selection, and human or algorithmic bias could all play a role. For now, the JWST spin survey stands as a puzzle. It challenges the assumption that the universe looks the same in every direction. 
It raises the possibility that our cosmic neighborhood carries a memory from before the Big Bang. If, and only if, future surveys can confirm the effect. Until then, the debate continues. Is this a glimpse of new physics, or just a statistical fluke waiting to be explained? Inside a rotating black hole, the rules get even stranger than most people realize. Instead of a single point at the center, the Kerr solution predicts a ring, a one-dimensional loop where density and gravity go off the charts. But here is the wild part. The equations do not just trap everything forever. They also allow, at least mathematically, for a kind of escape hatch. If you follow the path of a particle through the ring singularity, the math says it could pop out into a new region of space-time. In some models, this is where a black hole becomes a white hole, a region that explodes matter outward, impossible to enter from the outside, but with everything inside rushing away as if from a cosmic explosion. That is the theoretical bridge between collapse and creation. The Kerr black hole spin adds another twist, literally. As it rotates, it drags the very fabric of space-time around with it, an effect called frame dragging. Near the ring, this twisting gets so intense that time and space start to swap roles. In the most extreme scenarios, the ring singularity could act like a portal, launching a burst of energy and matter into a brand new, expanding universe. That is the bounce, a rebound from collapse, not an ending, but a beginning. The idea is that the Big Bang was not a true singularity, but a passage through the heart of a spinning black hole in a parent universe. Physicists have tried to work out what this bounce would look like. Some think quantum gravity or torsion effects, features that only show up at the highest densities, could prevent a true singularity from forming, making the rebound smooth instead of catastrophic. In those models, the universe inside inherits key properties from its parent, especially angular momentum. That is where the spin comes in. If the parent black hole was rotating, the newborn universe should start off spinning too, with its own cosmic scale angular momentum. In principle, that could leave a fingerprint, maybe even a preferred direction in the way galaxies spin or cluster together. But there is a catch. The standard inflationary model says that any traces of initial rotation get wiped out in the first tiny fraction of a second, leaving the universe nearly uniform and featureless. The Kerr bounce scenario, on the other hand, predicts that some imprint might survive. A cosmic memory of the parent's spin written into the largest structures we can observe. That is, the testable difference. If future surveys confirm unexpected alignments or handedness in galaxy spins, it could be a hint that our universe's birth was more like a rebound than a simple explosion. No one has fully solved the equations for a rotating bounce. Most models are still incomplete especially when it comes to matching quantum effects to classical gravity. But the core idea remains. The ring singularity in the Kerr black hole is not just a dead end. It could be the starting line for a whole new universe, with its own expansion, its own horizon, and maybe even its own subtle spin. That is the mechanism tying together the math of black holes and the mystery of our cosmic origins. Lee Smolin, a physicist known for thinking outside the box, once asked a question that flips the universe on its head. What if new universes are born inside black holes? In his view, black holes aren't just endpoints for matter, they're cosmic cradles. Every time a massive star collapses, it might not just vanish from our universe, but instead spark the birth of a new one, sealed off behind its own horizon. Each newborn universe could inherit traits from its parent, like mass, spin, and even the physical constants that shape its evolution. This idea is called cosmic natural selection. It borrows a page from biology. Universes that are better at making black holes will produce more offspring, so over time, the multiverse becomes filled with universes optimized for black hole creation. In Smolin's scenario, our universe might be just one branch on this endlessly branching tree. The rules of physics we observe, the values of gravity, the mass of the electron, the strength of the strong force, could be the result of a long history of cosmic trial and error, with each generation tweaking the dials just enough to survive and reproduce. If this picture is right, the stakes are enormous. The universe isn't a one-off event, 
but part of a vast, interconnected family, each member shaped by the accidents and successes of its ancestors. And black holes aren't just the end, they're the beginning, too. The next test is clear. If universes really do evolve by cosmic natural selection, there ought to be ways to tell. That's where the skeptics line up, ready to ask the hard questions. Skepticism is the heartbeat of science, and nowhere is that more important than with claims this big. The JWST Spiral Galaxy Study, for all its intrigue, is just a first step, a small sample from a single patch of sky. 263 galaxies might sound like a lot, but in a universe with billions of spirals, it's the tip of the iceberg. Past attempts to spot spin patterns, like those using SDSS or Pan Stars, have stumbled over hidden pitfalls. Telescope orientation, image quality, even the subtle ways algorithms or humans sort spirals. Sometimes, what looks like a cosmic pattern is just a quirk of the data, or a bias baked into the way we look for it. That's why astronomers are betting on the next generation of surveys to settle the question. The Vera Rubin Observatory's Legacy Survey of Space and Time, LSST, will begin in the mid-2020s. Over a decade, it's expected to deliver images of billions of galaxies, many with clear spiral structure. The plan is to make every step of the process transparent, publish the code, document the orientation of every image, and open the data so anyone can check for hidden bias. The European Space Agency's Euclid mission, already mapping the sky, is running its own double-blind spin studies. The goal is simple, make it possible to repeat the analysis, spot errors, and, if a real pattern exists, see it everywhere, not just in one corner of the cosmos. Until those results arrive, caution rules the day. The history of astronomy is littered with false alarms, patterns that vanished when the sample grew or the methods improved. If a true spin asymmetry survives the coming flood of data, it could force a rewrite of cosmic history. If not, it'll join the long list of ideas that didn't survive the light of better evidence. The James Webb Space Telescope Survey found that out of 263 distant spiral galaxies, about 66% appeared to rotate in the same direction. This unexpected result has revived serious discussion of the hypothesis that our universe could be the interior of a rotating black hole, a scenario first modeled mathematically by Roy Kerr in 1963 and expanded by physicists like Nikodem Poplowski. Despite the mathematical equivalence between the universe's mass and horizon and those of a giant black hole, the evidence remains incomplete. The current sample is small, and past studies warn of selection effects and observational bias. Planned surveys from facilities like the Vera Rubin Observatory and Euclid will soon deliver far larger datasets, offering a path to confirm or refute these early hints. For now, the standard cosmological model, built on inflation and isotropy, remains unchallenged. But as new data arrives, the possibility that black holes might birth universes, including our own, remains a question for science, not speculation.